dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Macy Marie. The Mountains Arts Center in Prestonsburg hosted their 29th annual Billie Jean Osborne's Kentucky Opry tonight. From blues to gospel, there's a little something for everyone. WIMT's Marianne Fletcher talked with organizers about why this year is so special. Music from the mountains is special. There's so much talent here in Eastern Kentucky and specifically uh, throughout Prestonsburg and, and this region. The skill it takes to put on a show for Billie Jean Osborne's Kentucky Opry. I think this is one of the best shows that we've had in, in a really long time. From the junior pros proving big talent also comes in small packages. To the older generations. Opry director Clayton Case says there's a wide range of music genres. And so we have gospel music, we have Motown music, uh, we have country music. And even some comedy from Fred Monroe Gogol. I want to say that I've been in love with the same woman for 54 years. Uh, if my wife ever finds out about it, she's going to kill me. Hello. For 29 years, keeping people coming back. It's completely awesome. Year after year. I don't like it. I love it. In Floyd County, Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Around 350 people packed the MAC tonight. And if you missed the show, don't worry. We have a full schedule on our website, WYMT.com. You can head over there to check it out. The London Laurel, the London Corbin Airport hosted their annual airplane day today. With activities going on all around the airport, nothing about this day was, well, plain. Airplane and helicopter rides were available around the city of London. And the portion of the money raised today goes to the local United Way summer food program. It's basically a way for the, for the city around here, for the people in the area to come out and see what's at the airport. Uh, there's so many people around here that don't even realize the airport's here that we just want to get the word out and we're trying to get the word out. Singer says visitors are welcome to stop by any time for a tour of the airport and can check out some of their on-site planes. An addiction recovery group from Winchester, Kentucky, Achieving Recovery Together and Spark Ministries and Hazard hosted an event in downtown Hazard today. They call the event Rumbles of Hope, supporting those who struggle with addiction. Live music, food and games were provided to bring the community and those struggling together. Recovered addicts also gave their testimonies to those attending. Well, it gives me a chance to share my story and um it actually helps my recovery as well when I get to come out and share with folks that are maybe just first in recovery. And, um, and like I said, it, it, it shows that, that we do recover. The event ended with a balloon release and motorcycle ride. Both Achieving Recovery Together and Spark Ministries serve to help those struggling with addiction. If you know someone who's faced addiction, you can find more information on our website. Hazy, hot, and humid today, and it's going to stay muggy all night long, but a beautiful sunset over at UVA Wise. Let's take a look as we take a look at the camera time lapse for the last few hours. Look at that sundown, not here. As we head into the 11 o'clock hour, I-64, a nice day up that way. No rain, just a few clouds mixed in, and now a little bit of uh, dark skies as we head across the region. Live input Doppler radar. No rain today. We didn't have a whole lot, just a couple of spotty showers and storms down near the borders, but otherwise it's been pretty quiet, pretty dry, still pretty mild right now. 78 Jackson, 77 in Moorhead, 75 in Pikeville, Logan, London as well, 71 in Harlan, 74 right here in Hazard. That's a few degrees warmer than it was this time last night. Of course, we had that lot of rain last night, so that uh, cooled us off quite quickly. Last night, but it's 12 degrees warmer in Hazard right now than it was this time yesterday. 5 degrees warmer in Harlan and Wise and 7 degrees warmer in Williamsburg. Your forecast for tonight, down in the upper 60s, muggy conditions will continue. Maybe a little patchy fog late, but mostly clear sky will be the name of the game. I'll have the rest of the forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Macy. All right, thanks, Brandon. West Virginia authorities are investigating the death of an inmate, though they say they found no sign of foul play or trauma. A Department of Military Affairs and Public Safety spokesman says inmate Mark Anthony Wardenberg died Saturday morning at South Central Regional Jail. 
Another unusual round of diplomacy for President Trump. He's offered to shake hands with Kim Jong-un at the DMZ and hit the reset button with China. Lee DeJang is traveling with the president in Korea. President Trump arrived to Seoul today with a warm welcome from South Korean President Moon Jae-in. But it's North Korea on his mind. We're going to the DMZ. I said, while well, I'm there, I'll shake his hand. We get along. Just hours earlier, the president used Twitter to invite Kim Jong-un to meet him at the DMZ, the demilitarized border between the North and the South. Mr. Trump said he would even cross over, something no U.S. president has ever done. Sure, I would. I would. I'd feel very comfortable doing that. I would have no problem. President Trump acknowledged the meeting would produce little more than a handshake, with talks to denuclearize Pyongyang at a standstill after negotiations fell apart in February. A North North Korean official called the DMZ proposal a very interesting suggestion. <laughs> At the G20 summit, the president worked on a high-stakes trade deal with Chinese President Xi Jinping. He said Beijing agreed to buy more goods from American farmers, and the U.S. will make it easier for Chinese students to obtain green cards. We will be continuing to negotiate, and I promised that uh, for at least the time being, we're not going to be lifting tariffs on China. Mr. Trump faced many questions about why that tough talk went missing when he spoke with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman about the killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Nobody so far has pointed directly a finger at the future king of Saudi Arabia. But his own CIA concluded the crown prince ordered the murder. The president also defended this exchange with Russian President Vladimir Putin. <laughs> in which he appeared to poke fun at Moscow's meddling in U.S. elections. This was the first time the two leaders met since the Mueller report was released. Weeks after his emotional testimony before Congress, a 9-11 first responder died Saturday from complications of cancer linked to his time spent on Ground Zero. Louis Alvarez died in hospice care. Alvarez had made headlines just a few weeks ago. He appeared before Congress alongside comedian Jon Stewart, delivering an impassioned plea to extend the September 11th Victim Compensation Fund. You all said you would never forget well, I'm here to make sure that you don't. Alvarez received a standing ovation for that testimony, and he was an NYPD bomb squad detective, and he was among the first responders who went to the World Trade Center on September 11th. An animal rescue group in the Charlotte, North Carolina area wants your old bra. And this is not a joke. They use them to help injured turtles recover. Sometimes shattered shells are not in good shape when rescue groups get a hold of them. And the team repairs the reptiles using some expected instruments, glue, a little tape, and bra clasp. It's just these little ingenious things that people have created in the past that we can use today to help animals out. When it's time to release the turtles back into the wild, rescuers say they wear the glue down a bit and the clasp pop right off. A two-year-old boy died and three other children became ill as a result of E. coli linked to contact with animals at the San Diego, California County Fair. Four cases of infections have been confirmed in children ranging from 2 to 13 years old, according to the County Health and Human Service Agency. The children visited the Del Mar Fairgrounds from June 8th to 15th and reported symptoms from the 10th to 16th. Three of the four children were not hospitalized, according to health officials. A 73-year-old man missing for seven days has been found alive. The hiker became separated from his friends last Saturday, and rescuers have been searching a forest which spans 700,000 acres. He was hiking with his friends in the Angeles National Forest when he fell behind, and Eugene Joe was able to follow a creek and stayed alive by drinking from it. After being found, he was airlifted to a local hospital, and he's expected to be okay. The Minister of Tourism and International Transport has confirmed that the search for the Americans missing from Barbados will be called off at sunset tomorrow. Teams from the Barbados Coast Guard, Police, Marine Unit, RSS and now the U.S. Air Force continue the search for 25-year-old Magdalena DeVille and 32-year-old Oscar Cerez. The couple disappeared on Monday after renting a jet ski. I understand it in matters of this nature, the international best practice is to do a search for at least three days. 
um, we have given the commitment and we are undertaking a search that goes well beyond that period. It will really go into six days. But it is a very large ocean out there and you know, you come to a point where mankind in its frailty can do no better. Officials are asking barbarians to be mindful of the couple's family who are on the island still. Coming up at 11, in Utah, police found the remains of a missing college student. We'll have the latest on the details of that investigation. June ramps up tomorrow and the month of July starts just as hot as we've had this week. I'll have your holiday week forecast in just a few minutes.